Trophy hunting is a common activity nowadays. Ever since the PlayStation 3 days, people have been trying their hardest to obtain these shiny badges of honor in order to show their love for a game or simply prove their mastery of its mechanics. The Yakuza series is no exception. In fact, there's only a handful of releases in the series that don't feature some kind of trophy support. To that end, I thought it would be fun to list out some of the hardest trophies in the series. With the exception of the HD ports of Yakuza 1 and 2, I platinumed every single mainline in the series thus far, so this would be a fun trip down memory lane for me too. But first, let's set some ground rules. Number 1 is a no-brainer, but platinum trophies themselves will not be included on this list, since that wouldn't make for a fair comparison. And in a similar vein, I will try and avoid including trophies that require 100% of the completion list. These trophies obviously make up most of the time you invest in these games by default, and dedicating half the list to them would just be boring. Number 2. The list will only focus on the mainline entries. Although I could make a separate list for the spin-off trophies in the future, if you would be interested in it. And lastly, the list will be sorted in order of release, rather than comparing the overall difficulty of the entries and ranking it accordingly. Just keep in mind that the PlayStation 2 games will be replaced with their respective HD ports. With all of that said, let's begin with the original Yakuza. For those who may not know, Yakuza 1 and 2 received an HD remaster for the PlayStation 3 and Wii U, which was exclusive to Japan and had trophy support. For this particular entry, I've chosen the trophy called Haruka ni Kubitake Jokyu. This trophy requires you to have reached a triple S rank in Haruka's Trust. While walking around town, Haruka will ask you to buy her specific food items or get high scores in various minigames, and once you complete all of them, you will get this trophy. The reason why this is so difficult is the task you need to fulfill at the batting cages. You need to get 20 home runs on the hard difficulty course. This means you need to play a flawless game, which becomes a nightmare due to the varying pitch speeds, occasional curveballs, and general stiffness of the controls. If you're curious and want to try this challenge out for yourself, there will be a link in the description to the video you're currently watching by user Jimmy Cubals, where he made the general rundown for every pitch. But be warned, this is an excruciating task you should only go for if you're extremely patient. Up next, we have the HD port of Yakuza 2. By all accounts, this isn't a difficult game to platinum. As long as you follow a guide so you don't miss a substory by accident, you should be good. The only real challenge I could think of comes from the trophy called Amon Ichizoku Gekya which just requires you to beat the four secret bosses. Joe Amon in particular can be really tough if you fight him barehanded, but similarly to the fight in Yakuza 1, purchasing an expensive weapon turns this fight into a joke. In this case, we're talking about a katana that requires almost 10 million yen to purchase, but ultimately makes for a pretty quick trophy. But if you want to do it legitimately, you'll be in for a rough ride. Moving on to Yakuza 3, we'll be talking about the remastered version of this game specifically. While there aren't any major differences in the trophy requirements, popping the trophies is actually harder in this version than the original. The hardest trophy in Yakuza 3 is called Minigame Master, and it is a nightmare. Each Yakuza game has a completion list that has a separate section dedicated to minigames, and in Yakuza 3, you will need to fully complete that section. This means you will need to fully master 19 different minigames, and to give you a brief example of what that includes, in the darts minigame, you will need to beat a total of 6 opponents in 3 different difficulty modes, meaning that you will need to win 18 matches just to complete this one minigame. What makes it worse is that the AI on the highest difficulty is borderline unfair, and will often require you to play absolutely flawlessly and hope that the AI makes a mistake, like missing a triple 20. I've mentioned how this trophy is far worse in the remastered version, and the difficulty mainly comes from the fact that the DualShock 4 controller, for whatever reason, had its sensitivity increased to an amount that nearly every millimeter of movement could be crucial to playing well. This might not be the case on PC, but as we all know, real Yakuza use a gamepad. After doing this trophy, I've started to genuinely despise certain minigames, so I wouldn't recommend doing this unless you absolutely adore Yakuza 3 and are sure you can handle it. Also, I recommend checking out this video by Naomi Hendon, as they made a great guide on how to win at every minigame. Next on the chopping block is Yakuza 4, arguably one of the easiest platinums in the series. The trophy I've picked for this particular entry is called Way of the Pachinko King. Gambling minigames are always a pain to do, but this is a minigame we don't see too often these days. 
Without going into too much detail on how Pachinko works, let's just say it's a cross between pinball and a slot machine. As in, there is some skill involved, but you will mostly need a ton of luck. Luckily, you can obtain a number of cheat items like the Get Rich Quick Card that can make this task a little bit easier, but you never know with the RNG. Perhaps the best thing about this trophy is the fact that Pachinko is completely absent in the Western release of Yakuza 4 Remastered. Thank you, RGG Studios. Entry number 5 is the one and only Yakuza 5. So, remember how at the start of the video I said I would try and refrain from listing trophies that required 100% completion? Well, this entry will be an exception. It has to be. This is Yakuza 5 we're talking about, after all, and nothing in this franchise can compare to the scope and tedium of the Hall of Famer trophy. It's fairly simple. Just complete the completion list. That's like saying just do an open heart surgery, easy peasy. No. This trophy infuriated me even more than the minigame master because there was seemingly no end to it. With 5 playable characters in 5 different cities, it will take you nearly 200 hours to platinum this game, depending on your RNG, and this trophy is the main reason for that length. From completing every sub-story and side-story objective, to doing every heat action, crafting every weapon, even achieving a top 5 ranking in the Colosseum with every character except for Haruka, this trophy was burdened by the game simply having too much stuff to do. As much as I love Yakuza 5, I can't recommend that people try doing this trophy. It might sour you on the whole experience of trophy hunting because of some missable tasks and the general scope. This is basically the game that started the whole trend of 100% in the completion list here, which would then reappear in Yakuza 0, the Kiwami games, Judgment, and so on. Seems to be just one more thing for its legendary legacy. Moving on from my rant, we now arrive at Yakuza 0, the golden child and meme king of the series. The hardest trophy here, to no one's surprise, is Cat Scratch Fever. If you've tried to platinum Yakuza 0, you'll realize that this is even more absurd than some of the mahjong requirements you have to do. Cat Scratch Fever is a bronze trophy that requires you to win 10 bets on 3 round tournaments at JCC. This description is often misinterpreted by newcomers, since you are actually supposed to win 10 full tournaments to pop the trophy, rather than just 10 random bets. The premise of the minigame is that you play rock, paper, scissors. For every correct call, you deal damage to the opponent until one of you collapses with 0 HP. In the event that both of you choose the same sign, you will need to mash a certain button to win. The reason why this trophy is so despised is that it's just pure RNG. There are theories online which imply that picking Jennifer, when her description states she's having a good day, will increase your chances of winning. But speaking as someone who got this trophy, these theories don't mean much in the long run. I'd lose the first round with the fan favorite characters as well as win two tournaments in a row with one of the supposedly weakest contestants. The sad thing is that this is really just luck based. You need to win three matches in a row for that tournament to count, and when you consider that some contestants can get up after being knocked out, which can even lead to a one-hit KO, you realize why this is such an infuriating task. Personally, I would recommend just trying this minigame out when you pass by Theater Square, and if you win, save the game and move on to a different task. Fixating on JCC will rarely result in a good outcome. Just be patient and hope for the best. That's all there is to it. We have now arrived at the first remake, Yakuza Kiwami. Looking at the trophy list, there seems to be many overlaps with the original Yakuza's requirements. You could even argue that getting the triple S in Haruka's Trust is once again the worst activity to do. Mainly because of the karaoke song Otometa in My Life that requires a 950 point score. But personally, I find the Dragon of Legend trophy to be much worse. This gold trophy requires you to have beaten the game on Legend difficulty. Considering how most of the Yakuza games allow you to do a Legend difficulty run on New Game Plus, this is a fairly easy task to do. But in Kiwami, there is one segment that turns this run into an exercise in frustration. That being the infamous car chase scene. Whenever a game requires you to master a gameplay style not directly tied to the main mechanics, it makes for a universally hated part of the game. Just look at the Space Harrier segment in Bayonetta. The car chase scene in Kiwami simply requires insane precision, as you can't just retry from a checkpoint. If you fail, you will need to reload your save file, and in the case of this game, this means you will need to redo an entire level of defeating Snakeflower Triad members, culminating in a fight against Lao Ka Long. At least when talking about something like doing Automata in my life, you can immediately restart. But the sheer fact that you can't save right before the car chase scene, which was the case in Yakuza 0, makes this one of the worst tasks in the game. 
With the exception of the car chase scene, the rest of the Legend playthrough is really bloody easy, thanks to one of the best versions of the Tiger Drop to date. But yeah, be mindful of your heat eye and hope it all goes well. Moving on to the Dragon Engine games, we have Yakuza 6, which I find to be the absolute easiest Yakuza Platinum to obtain. Since this was the first title in the Dragon Engine, the game had very few restaurants, collectibles and minigames to beat, making for a really relaxing time after the roller coaster of Yakuza 5. Considering how easy it is, it's hard to pick a trophy to highlight here, since the game doesn't even require 100% completion. Personally, I went for the Kiryu Clan Enforcer trophy. To unlock it, you will need to get one of your members in the Clan Creator minigame to level 99. So, what's the problem with this trophy? Tedium. You could argue that something being boring doesn't necessarily make it hard, but trophies like this one make you lose interest in the grind, as there really isn't a sense of achievement by the end of it. There is no skill involved. To give you an example, once I picked out a member to max out, I've started using my own XP to level him up, since I've already unlocked all Kiryu's skills, and I was much faster than replaying Clan Creator missions. Eventually, you will run out of just one type of XP. It's usually either the green or purple XP which means you will need to run to the nearest restaurant that has good food for that type of XP, equip items that increase the experience gained, and then enter and exit the menu prompt since you can't just eat 70 portions of a single item. You keep doing this until your stomach is full and then use an item to empty your stomach or run to the Rise Up Gym to buy that very item and then keep doing this rinse and repeat until your clan member is maxed out. Also, you need to keep unequipping and re-equipping the EXP boost gear because keeping it on means Kiryu can't run for more than a few meters. It's just annoying to deal with. Alternatively, you can substitute this entry for the Amon Trophy instead, as this game has one of the hardest Amon Trophies in the series. But turning the difficulty down makes this into a joke, even with the colorful drones surrounding you. Here we have another Dragon Engine entry, Yakuza Kiwami 2. Unfortunately, it kind of continues the theme of tedium that was discussed earlier, but not for the same reasons. Once again, this is a really easy Platinum, albeit more time-consuming, and the trophy that stands out is You're Not Welcome. To unlock this particular trophy, you will need to beat all of the bouncer missions at Club Deborah. There are technically only 26 missions, but you will need to beat each of them three times, once on normal difficulty, once on hard, and once on legend. So really, you'll have to beat 78 missions. This can get really tedious if you do it all in one sitting, but if you space it out between your other Platinum requirements, it gets a bit better. The fact that you can't heal during these missions makes for a bit of a challenge. And speaking of challenge, Mission 26, aka Pandemonium, is a perfect example. Imagine combining the 1 vs 100 fight from Yakuza 5 and adding a bunch of almonds to the fray. It's absolutely chaotic, but honestly it makes up for the lack of climax battles and general tedium of the earlier missions. Plus, this mission actually makes a good example of using Sims music in Yakuza Kiwami 2. The band is great, but the music shouldn't be a part of the main story, at least if you ask me. Yet, when we're talking about side activities, especially something this explosive, yes, this was an excellent call. The song called A is a perfect fit, and I recommend playing through this mission if you haven't already. So yeah, tedious, but ultimately you do get quite a reward by the end of it. Finally, we have arrived at the last entry of this list, Yakuza 7. Again, we're talking about a pretty easy Platinum, but this time you can absolutely pinpoint the hardest trophy with ease. We're talking about Victory of the Millennium. This gold trophy requires you to have beaten the true final Millennium Tower dungeon. Normally, when the game gives you a warning about a difficulty spike, you might scoff and say, eh, I'm close enough, should be fine, right? Well, this time, this wasn't just a gentle suggestion, this was a straight up threat. The dungeon is absolutely the hardest task you will need to complete in this game, and the grind to reach that point would be long. You might think I would hate the thought of grinding the same type of enemy all the time, considering my previous comments on things like the clan creator. But again, the payoff of being near death in almost every encounter makes the grind incalculably worth it. And this is coming from someone that genuinely despises turn-based combat, Yakuza 7 is just so good that it made me excited to go through this dungeon. The final fight against Amon at the top is just beautiful, with him summoning tough entities of Kiryu, Majima and Saejima to fight alongside him. It will be rough, but you can do it, and the view from the top is absolutely worth it. To everyone who has watched this video to its completion, thank you. This was a fun trip down memory lane for me, and I hope you enjoyed it. 
Feel free to share your own stories about overcoming the many challenges of the series in the comments below. If there are any other topics you would like to see discussed here, let me know and I will do my best to make something fun out of it. Until next time, take care of yourselves and have a great day. Cheers!